My name is Ty and I am in the traffic safety department. I'm a signs and signal technician for the city of Gillette and today we will be talking about signs. So with just the signs and you add in our, all of our street signs which are two per stop sign, we have almost close to 10,000 signs that we maintain here for the city of Gillette. We are responsible for obviously the ones that are in city limits and then on uh, Highway 59 and 1416, we are responsible only for the street signs. We do have some wayfinding signs on 59 and 1416 that are ours, but other than that, the state, it's majority of the state signs. Garner Lake has a few for the uh, county, but majority of the signs on Garner Lake too are also ours. you can tell it's a state sign because it's usually marked by the last date of the year. County signs are a little difficult. The majority of the time you can tell they are on wooden poles where we use the metal telespar post. County uses wood. If a sign is damaged or if it's blown down in the wind and they want to contact us, they can contact the engineering division up at City Hall and they will get the message to us or they can contact traffic safety directly and we will go out and take care of it, pick it up make a new one, whatever needs to be done. Now if a sign's hit, it depends on if it's after hours, they will have to call the non-emergency PD line and then they will get a hold of one of us to take care of what kind of sign it is. So when, we, when making a sign, it depends on if it's a personalized sign and I mean as far as like water department has, they have to number their buildings so I have to actually design that sign for them, or if it's a planter sign, I gotta put the names on it. Compared to a regular speed limit sign, I can just pull that up from the database and make it fairly quick. I don't have to design anything, and that takes a little more time. And then from there, I go to the warehouse, check out the size of the sign blank, and then I have to cut the high intensity sheeting and apply that over the sign blank. And then I use the cutter that's in my office and then I cut the face out of the sign. And then from there, it comes out in one solid colored, black, blue, red. I have to weed, it's called weeding. You take this little tool and you weed out what's not needed. Sometimes the letters stay, sometimes the letters go. So it depends on what kind of sign you're making, how it's weeded out. And then from there, I put the clear transfer tape on top of the sign face and then I roll it in the roller and then peel off the clear transfer tape and the sign's done. So there's quite a few steps to it. Usually an engineer will tell us a sign needs to be installed or even citizens sometimes will say, hey, you know, we don't have a speed limit sign come in but a lot of people are speeding or, you know, we put in a new crosswalk somewhere or, you know, a new street is added, stop sign may be added, but usually it comes from an engineering division that says we need to add signs. Or if a new location comes in that wants a wayfinding sign, we will direct them to how to get to that place. So that's a look at how the city makes and maintains the signs you see alongside the road. Thanks for watching this episode of Ion Gillette.